Well, good afternoon there, Pipe Pals. How are y'all doing? It's old Hoy Smoking Pipe Padre. Saying hello and uh, good afternoon to you. Well, I'm uh, mm, just enjoying this wonderful twisted flake. <clears throat> this is again something I just bought at the Briar Patch oh, about a week or so ago. Twisted flake. And let's see if I can get you a little picture of the Twisted Flakes. There we go. That's a nice little picture. Yeah. And it's a Virginia Flake. Mmm. And it is really tasty. I mean, I would uh, actually even employ the D word. It is uh, delicious. Mmm. Well, I thought I'd just get on here and just take a couple minutes to say hello to you all. And mostly to enjoy a pipe. Mm. I'm getting ready to go to dinner here with a friend. <clears throat> Going to go out to <clears throat> Davis, California to uh, a restaurant called uh, Cafe Italia. And if you are up in this area, you probably know a little bit about <clears throat> maybe heard of Cafe Italia. That's good, pretty good food. And uh, just going to meet a friend, and we're just going to sit and just talk. We have some really good theological discussions. But uh, my goodness, this is good. I uh, was just watching. First of all, I want to congratulate the winners of my contest. And thank you to all of you who did participate and enter. I do appreciate that, and uh, I loved all your entries. <clears throat> um, I will say that when I went to s send off the prizes, um, I almost had a heart attack. Uh, I didn't realize that mailing uh, the gifts and the prizes this year was going to be pretty astronomical. <laughs> But that's okay. You only have one contest maybe once or twice a year. So anyway, um, whether, congratulations to the Pipe Monk, uh, Gailey MacArthur, and uh, Daniel Shore. Um, those were the, the winners of this uh, summer's uh, Over the Moon contest. So thank you for entering all of you. And again, congratulations to those, uh, those winners. <clears throat> um, this watching and... Uh, some videos and also catching up a little bit on some correspondence and uh, the Theo Bacchinist uh, sent me a couple little uh, hmm, uh, missives and one of them was I asked him a question about he had this beautiful beautiful Canadian pipe I guess he found it I don't know if it's uh, that's a Becker pipe I think it is anyway check out the video it's quite interesting um, beautiful pipe though gorgeous thing and it looked like a Canadian to me anyway he didn't tell us what he was smoking and he just sent me a reply saying he was smoking a thing called Black Woods Flake McClellan I think so um, I was also getting a hankering I've been going through uh, more stuff health wise and I've been discovering the kind of the medicinal what happened here oh the medicinal properties of coconut oil and coconut and you know, all things coconut coconuts and i started thinking do they actually have a coconut flavored or a coconut more than coconut flavored but a coconut pipe tobacco that i might also try hmm so I, I, I got on the internet and started looking around. And then also I, I went to uh, look up uh, Eric Austin Lee's um, Black Woods Flake. And I found that. I did find some coconut um, flavored, quote unquote, flavored pipe tobaccos. And I think even McBaron's has one. But the, the when I went to pipe reviews, 
um, they weren't they weren't saying anything really like yeah this is like you know <clears throat> the greatest thing since sliced uh, you know turnips or something you know there wasn't just a, there wasn't any glowing reports and one guy says you know there are better blends out there than this and it was pretty boring insipid bland um, good room note but that's all I bet you I'll bet you anything I think if I'm not mistaken Boswell's might have a, a coconut flavored tobacco which would be very good that's one thing about um, uh, who was it I was watching um, oh uh, legacy.uk good old Chris there Formerly Dunhill Man UK. And he was enjoying some uh, uh, Boswell's uh, Northwoods. And uh, of course, that's an excellent blend as well. Mm. But anyway, so I was looking at this, uh, what Eric Austin Lee was smoking, and he uh, made a comment that <clears throat> prompted me to almost, I wouldn't say immediately, but within 15 minutes. Uh, go to my computer and uh, do a little reconnoitering on this Blackwoods Flake. And I ordered some tins. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, because of what Eric said, I didn't just order tins. I made sure they're going to be here like by tomorrow. <laughs> it's that good. And, um, and what I was thinking is... Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to I've talked about this in in some of my posts uh, before. Is you know finding a go-to blend, and certainly I um, have a wide spectrum. Catholic with a little C uh, on tastes. I like English. I like Balkans. I like Orientals. I like aromatics. I like just about just about anything as long as it's really truly a decent tobacco pirate cake absolutely um but a go-to blend would be something that isn't just something that does taste good now again you know again all these things that i have tried they all taste great but there are other things that i consider when i um uh, you know for their smokeability you know for example one thing and this is a big word in the health food community. I, I know some people probably really just, it chap, chaps are high when I start trying to equate smoking, you know, pipe tobacco with health food and health health fitness and stuff. It's like, you know, I, I had a few people say some really snide and even ugly things like you're nuts and all this stuff. Yeah, cocoa nuts, yeah. But, <clears throat> and that's okay. That's okay. I understand. I, I probably would, you know, question people, you know, probably too. But again, I don't see this as a real problem. And uh, I think if it was a problem, I and I have had problems with uh, addictions before. There's no doubt about that, and this is not one of them, believe it or not. Again, to me, the difference between addiction and enjoyment are light years away. But um, but I digress. I was going to say that a go-to blend has to have sus sustainability, and what that means is, am I going to be able to when it runs out to go back and get more you know pretty easily so I would say that the answer to that question of sustainability is I think this is a tobacco again it's a bulk blend and I think it is pretty much readily available at Briar Patch you know three three hundred sixty five days a year with the exception of Christmas and New Year's and if, if it isn't actually in the store, it can certainly be ordered in bulk, no problem. Um, the other thing is the economy. Two flakes. Two flakes for this bite. That's it. And that will last me probably at least 45 minutes. I went up to um, the lake yesterday to have breakfast with a dear friend. Took this new pipe with me. I really like it. And this is in this, by the way, folks. Mm. Oh, I like I like that stem. I like that stem. This acrylic stem. Um, 
I bought this pipe on a lark simply because I didn't have a pipe with me when I went to the Briar Patch two weeks ago and I wanted to try some of these tobaccos. You know, I hadn't had a pipe in about, about two weeks. You know, I had some time. I wasn't going to be going out and saying mass or I wasn't going to go, you know, do anything to where I was going to be smoking, smelling like a smoking, like I've been smoking because some people get offended by that. It's kind of a little bit less if you say, well, I was smoking my pipe. They go, oh, you smoke a pipe? Yeah. So if you say you smoke cigarettes, that's kind of a, that's a bad thing, you know. But pipes are kind of like, well, maybe that's okay, I guess. Even Bing Crosby smoked a pipe and going my way. Bo -bo 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 -bo. Anyway, so <clears throat> sustainability, economy, um, and durability, you know, I mean... When I have a when I have a go-to blend, I have a lot of nice tobaccos, and to be honest with you, I, I try to keep them fresh, whether in this or in a, uh, a mason jar. So in other words, they're not something that's really portable. I guess you could say they're portable, but they're they're not. This is a little more durable. I could throw this in the truck. I could put it in a um, an overnight bag. You know, I'm not going to worry about you know. Well, now some people might say, well, you might break the flakes. Well, come on. That's 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 good. They're gonna get burned anyway, and they don't have to be pristine. You know, this is the. I mean, basically, you rub the flake out anyway. So, if even if the flakes get quote unquote bruised or torn up a little bit, it's not the end of the world. You know, you just put it on a little piece of paper or a little tin, and you just, you know then you can put it in your pipe. It's still it's still good. Okay. But the thing I like about it. Is a, it's it's is is I like the flavor. Um, it has it, most flakes. If you if you do it right, they they burn. You can burn the whole thing in one sitting. I mean, you know, you have to be a little bit conscious of it, but it's not something you have to fiddle with all the time. You can actually make YouTube videos and talk and hardly have to ever ever have to light it. So lightability, durability, sustainability, economy, all those things kind of go into like a go-to blend, you know? I mean, and again, it's something you really enjoy. It's something that, it, uh, you know, another thing is um, uh, uniformity. Uh, is it gonna be pretty much an even consistent smoke all the way through? Uh, a lot of times with some tobaccos, especially if they are heavily cased, Mm, I just started, I thought of another favorite, my, one of my favorite fall time. Fall's coming real soon. And we were already getting little hints of fall in the morning air and the evening air. And one of my all-time favorite tobaccos for the fall is uh, Silum's Black. Love Silum's Black. Delicious. There's something smoky and sweet and mystical about Silum's Black. So if you haven't tried Silum's Black, that's another good one. But, but it's getting into that time of year for me, the, 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 you know, the fall and winter months where I like to bring out my, my dark, deep, rich kind of English blends. And, and even though this is not truly, a, I would say, an English blend, it is a, it is a hearty Virginia. And that's why I'm kind of looking forward to uh, um, Blackwood's Flake. I bet you, because it looks, you know, I think I, I've seen, I saw some pictures of it on uh, pipes and cigars. And it's it's definitely black, blackish. Which tells me it's going to be a rich tobacco and very flavorful. So again, now this, again, uh, one thing about this tobacco here, it doesn't smoke uh, hot. It doesn't get... Um, uh, you know, kind of noxious at the very end. I mean, it's consistent throughout the pipe. So that's another thing to think about. So all these things kind of go into like your go-to blend. Uh, for me, and maybe some people just have a go-to blend. They buy it at, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rite Aid or they buy it at Walgreens or they buy it at their favorite local tobacconist and they love it. And it's a bag blend and it's, and hey, that's great. But, but these things to me, the tins, they're a little bit more on the kind of special thing. You know, you're going to have maybe a little bit of this once in a while. 
Uh, again, you, I'm not saying you can't make one of these your go-to blends. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying for me, um, you know, um, if I if I got kind of particular, you know, really, really like said, that's it. This is it. This is one. This is no more after, after this. Um, whether it's, you know, early morning pipe or Presbyterian mixture or squadron leader, you know, some of the uh, Drew Estate ones. I found one that I really absolutely loved, that dark, uh, I think it was that dark Cavendish, I think it was called. That was very nice. But then again, the price also goes into it as well. So the dark, the Twisted Flake uh, looks like it was be a, a, a blend that I might, if I ever said, yeah, I have a go-to blend and that's what it is, that might be it. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do say that yet. But I'm kind of test driving it to see, you know. Now, again, it's akin to, a little bit akin to, well, actually not, well, I, I don't know. Is it like Stonehaven? No. Stonehaven is its own unique blend, just, just like Pirate Cake. And no, I'm not saying Stonehaven and Pirate Cake are the same. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's unique like Pirate Cake. But the reason why I wouldn't say I could make Stonehaven my go-to blend is simply because it's not sustainable. I have a couple of unopened foil pouches of Stonehaven. I have a, some Stonehaven in a jar. And Stonehaven is definitely one of those uh, specialized smokes, simply because it's kind of rare. In fact, you go to the Briar Patch, the only reason why I've been able to get a couple of the unopened packages and stuff is because somehow the planets line up just right, you know, and... Um, you know, whatever it is, and I go into Barra Patch when they just get in that afternoon or that morning, a, a stash of Stonehaven, and they'll say, well, we do have a couple, of, you know, are you interested? You know, I'll say, are you kidding? Is the Pope Catholic? You know, give me one. And I'll buy, I'll buy a bag, you know. I know it's expensive, but I'll buy one. So, anyway, so Stonehaven is very, very, uh, very rare. But this, um, but this twisted flake is is quite uh, quite lovely, and I think it would be something that would be reasonable, realistic to say, yeah, if I had a go-to blend, it probably would be the twisted flake. Um, I, I, again, I'm not saying that I am actually inaugurating this as my twisted uh, as my as my go-to blend, but. It's something I've given some serious. I'm giving some serious thought to, as you can tell. And uh, who knows? Maybe I'll even put a little coconut oil in there and check that out. You know, I'm, I'm crazy that way. Mm. Because actually, tell you the truth, this has a sweetness to it that wouldn't be, which would probably pair well with a coconut something. Because it has a mild, sweet, nutty flavor. So, um, who knows? I might, I might, I might just kind of anoint my twisted flakes with a little coconut oil and just see what that does. It would probably make it burn pretty hot and harsh. I, I, that's my guess. But who knows? Maybe old holy smoking pipe pottery might come up with a new, new uh, pipe tobacco flavor. Uh, that's all organic, yeah. We call it uh, organic twist. I mean, co coconut twist. Hey, I like that coconut twist. So maybe, uh, maybe my next video, I'll, I'll kind of do that just, just to see, just to see. Uh, who knows? We'll just, we'll see. Okay. Well, anyway, again, thanks for watching. Um, old Holy Smoking Pipe Potter is saying, I hope you're having a great evening wherever you're at. It's one of those beautiful. Late summer evenings, I just think, you know, late summer is, to me is absolutely a delicious part of the season. It's like, the, it's like that ripe, it's like that ripe peach that's just so 
juicy, you know, it's just swollen with flavor and summertime goodness, you know, and I think that's the way it is with a with a good pipe on a sun, summer evening. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you real soon. See ya.